Boker Tov, Yom Tov, Zohrim Tovim, and Laila Tov. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening, no matter where you're at. This is Carrie, and I'm wanting to speak from my heart today, and I will probably be going into the proof room as well. What I wanted to share with you today was a question that was presented by a subscriber. I'm going to read the question to you, and then I'm going to share my response and a little bit of um, a heart addendum, and then I wanted to go into a scripture regarding the restoration of all things. So the question was, I was wondering if you think the Bible and other scriptures have been corrupted and mistranslated through time, and if you think there are any way of actually knowing what happened 2,000 years ago, for example. I don't really know how to phrase the question, but I can say that I'm starting to see that all of reality is a lie. Like I find myself wondering if my chair is actually a chair, or is it potential energy or just matrix ones and zeros, which I perceive as a chair. Another example I could give is, I don't think anyone could prove to me right now that World War II happened, for example. I could watch documentaries, look at photos, read books and news articles from that time and so on, but those are just images or words on a page, if, you're get, if you get where I'm going with this. I'm starting to think that history as we know it is a complete lie as well. I guess what I'm asking is this. Do you believe that first and foremost we should listen to what the Spirit reveals to us individually? Or do you think there is actually a 100% way to verify ancient texts and trust them completely to lead us to the truth? Or is it a mix of both? I love this question. This is I understand where this individual is coming from, and for a personal uh, testimony to this is that in going through the quote-unquote truth movement when I woke up, I was desperate to find truth because I had realized I had been lied to about so many things that I was scrambling around to reorient myself into a foundation that I felt sure-footed to stand upon. So my mantra was the truth at all costs. But then as I started getting into the language, I began to see that, and this may not be an answer that most people wanna hear, that truth is more relative than we think it is. There are only a few, few things that are absolute truth. So I'm gonna to read to you my response, and then we're gonna look at a few things. First of all, I said, what you described above is the holographic universe, the matrix. I would not want to be in the position of telling anyone anything. However, my suggestion would be to listen to the spirit. We have a force outside of ourselves assisting us, and in that, and through that, we experience life. As there is no right or wrong, as all is experience, our ingathering is a sum total of what is in our today. Yesterday is gone. World War II was real for the folks that went through it. But if we haven't gone through it or experienced it, is it real for us? I hold to the position that although there might be history, much has been altered. So how does that affect me today? I am a spirit being having an experience in the here and now. I don't put my trust into anything except spirit and source. Everything else is an illusion. The matrix is real. It exists. We have been living in it and through it. And we are getting to the point where we will be moving up and out of it, but it must be done collectively. That is why everything is such a slow go for us to increase our consciousness levels, as we are all connected together as one. And many don't realize that yet. So they don't realize that what they do affects everyone else, either good, bad, or indifferent, in accelerating our growth or stalling it. The trouble is, is that we just don't remember. That is our head wound. Once we remember that we have experienced many lifetimes, we will know our experiences to be truth. As far as ancient texts go, my question is, are you speaking of translations of those texts from their origin into English or another language of the one who is translating it? Yes, I do believe there is a way to verify through the Spirit, because it's the Spirit that leads us into all truth. 
That is the difficulty of becoming one, is a completed being where you are fully removed from the lesser narrative and lower densities through your spirit journey. If you are speaking of translated works, anything that has been translated through ego is going to have slants to it based upon the person translating it. They will only see where they are at in their ingathering. These sacred writings have potential, good, bad, or indifferent, and our job is to spiritually discern. That is why we are wanting to teach people how to excavate it for themselves. The Spirit will show you exactly what you need to see based upon where you are at in the moment of your spiritual journey. So what we share is what we are seeing based upon the sum total of our ingathering through our spirit journey. The letters grow with you and you grow with wet them. Which happens first? Well, it's truly a quantum relationship. We are as they are. If you are looking for absolutes from partiality, how can it be absolute? The only absolutes there are is source, light, and love. This is the difficulty in the wrestle. So partiality is your current until you are completed and known. Much will be revealed once the veil of forgetting is removed. We are all wrestling in this currently. And I cannot give you more of a definitive answer to satisfy your question other than what I have just shared. I wish that there were easy answers, as it seems like they're complicated. But as we continue to go and grow, we will find that it's actually a very simple answer to our questions because the answer truly is one. We are all one. Trying to get there and finding it, though, that is a completely different story. So it got me thinking about a verse <clears throat> that I thought would be worthy to dig out. And it is in Acts 3.21, whom the heavens must receive until the completion of the times of all those which Eloah, God, hath spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets, who are from old of old. That was John Etheridge's. And King James says it this way, whom the, heaven, whom the heaven must receive until all the things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began should be fulfilled. So in some other translations, this would be the phrase, the restoration of all things. I believe that's what we're all searching for. And that is the truth that we are wanting to discover. But the simple answer in finding truth is the unified field of oneness. And this verse shows this to us. Whom the heavens must receive, whom the heavens is right here. So what we are looking at, if we take a look at this through the words, I like to do it one by one because that way we can build upon it as we go. So the first word, to, for, and right and proper. That's interesting. Two and four, right and proper. So this word, <clears throat> excuse me, in Aramaic is a lament standing alone. And what do we have before it? We have the dalit and the hay. So the lamed means instruction. These are the letters of instruction, teaching shepherds, that are, are presented by doors who come who will open the door for you to the letters of instruction, the letters of light and love. And this is done to those who are dull, who are poor and feeble. They need to have a revelation presented to them. That is why the door comes, to open that revelation to them, to the letters of light, so it can be revealed to them. In the next word, we see right and proper. I love this because it has a vav. So the root of it to be right and proper is exactly as it is written. But it also has the meaning, the lament olive, to be like not. Meaning you need to be humble and teachable and be connected to that which will instruct you in the ways of oneness unity. Because the olive means one. It also has the meaning of those who have been instructed and teach 
they are associated to as one, as God, through spirit, and they carry the thousandfold Christ anointing. Then we move on to the word heavens, the Shemaya. The Lamed has been added in front of this. So again, this is the instruction of the Shemaya. And if we look at it, it talks about the waters, me, the waters, the lower waters versus the above, the, the higher waters, which is part of the Shemaim. And we've spoken many times about Shem, those who are of the named, those who have gone through the living fire and the living waters of instruction that give you the power, means, and direction to do what? To know and become that we are one. Once you actually attain this and you realize through a knowing, through da'at, which is a word that you would know as gnosis, da'at is Hebrew and is the hidden place on the tree of life, on the, on the uh, Kabbalah tree of life, it is the esoteric side of the knowing that happens through the instruction of being able to find that which was hidden now revealed to you. That place of understanding, oneness, the Christ unity, the Mashiach anointing. Then you are of the name because you went through the teachings of the living fire and water that gave you the power to become one. Next, we have the word, and I will show it to you here. So we went through the right and proper instruction of the heavens as to appeal to or to accuse to receive and to take, to present and oppose. This is a perfect expression of duality. This is the language of duality that we are instructed in, to see one side or the other in our school of divinity, to be able to choose this or that in order to render everything clear. So what is most fascinating is if we have the word to appeal to or to accuse, to present and oppose what has been added. Well, first the root is kuf bet lamed, and the kuf will get into what's been added. The kuf means to compress light within during the circle of time, that which was once hidden now revealed, so that you can find the narrow path between the light and the dark, the path, the narrow one that you find. Then we have Bet Lamed. This is a shortened version, version of the word husband. And it also is a word that means heart, anxious and fearful. So the light compression comes and is presented by the husband. That is to build your heart, the one that is anxious and fearful, so that you can have inside authority over that which makes you anxious and fearful. So in the root, there is much being said. But then when we look at it, about the appealing to, and to appeal to, accuse, present, and oppose, what do we have? Well, think about it here. This is Kabbal. Maybe that should ring some bells of those who are the controllers in the world that are the, the Kabbal and what they are doing and presenting things to us and opposing us and accusing. But then we have the judges that come. Dalit Noon has been added to the front. Dalit Noon means judge. And who are the judges? Well, we've shared with you before in the teaching on the gardeners and the garden who the judges are. These are the defenders of the people that come to oppose the cabal in what they are trying to do. As they are a door, they open the letters of light to you to bring forth a revelation, a spiritual path that you need to take so that you can be in opposition to what the cabal is projecting upon you. And then on the suffix side, which is pertaining to father, everything that is on the, on the prefix side is mother's teaching. And remember, she teaches you the divine masculine father everything on the suffix he is teaching you the divine feminine so as the judges come who present themselves in the way of mother because she is fiercely protective 
is meant so that you can be connected to the Father while you are here in the flesh, because it is the cabal that is opposing us while we are in our lesser nature. So the defenders of the people have to come to teach you and bring forth the revelation that you need to set you above in the Shamayim, out of the waters of chaos, where the cabal is present. And then this is the word Adma, until. I love this because Adma, Ad, until, this also has to do with a witness and a testimony, and it has to do with time. And so the time until is when we have the eyes to see the fountain that is within us while we are here in the flesh, having gone through the door that reveals to us that we are weak and feeble. I need to share with you that Dala right here, this is literally the root word where we get the symbol Dalit from. And it does mean we can feeble. So in the time when we can begin to see that we are weak and feeble by going through the door of the inner man where the revelation will come to us because the language of light, the teaching shepherds will reveal what we need to know through the living water teachings of mother and father to teach us the way of one. Because this word, this is really a compound word, the time of what, meaning the revelation of what we need to know, that we are all one. Moving on, we have the next word, which would be completion. And through these, these different translations, we have completion, we have completion again, King James says, all things um, fulfilled, they actually put it down in the end, fulfilled. And then another uh, translation says the restitution. And yet other translations, like the new King James, says the restoration of all things. So what is all things? What is completion? Well, let's take a peek at this so that you can see it. It is the word, we already did until, fullness, fulfillment, and consummation. Consummation, if we take a look at it through a definition, because sometimes it's better for us to go into the English to see what's going on. Two things, talking about intimacy in a marriage relationship that is complete through intimacy, or also the point at which something is complete or finalized. So intimacy, marriage, completion, and finalized. And going in deeper to take a look, the root of this is Mem Lamed Aleph. And Mem Lamed Aleph in Hebrew means to be filled, to fill it up, to fullness. So when we're looking at this here, what has changed? Well, we can already see that in this word we have a lamed, we have a vav, and we have a yod that have all been added to the root of mala. So what's going on? So the completion is when the teaching shepherds come they are going to fill up and complete that which is necessary for the consummation act of the sacred marriage, the place of intimacy, where the heart has been pierced. Think of about that in an act of intimacy and consummation, where the heart has been pierced and connected to. And through the process of the living water teachings of mother and father that come to instruct you, that will bring you the power necessary on the inside. The power means in direction as the work and the deed that needs to be done by the hands of the individuals that are opening the door to their inner man for this information to be revealed to them that we are all one. 
So this is what the act of what we are waiting for, the consummation of the marriage of the people who have been instructed in the way of oneness. That is when the completion will happen. It could take a long time or it could take a short time, dependent on how long it takes for the message to be gone forth, to go and hit the ears of those who need to see it, to begin to shift the collective consciousness in that way, in the way to make it easier for others to receive. Moving on. In the season, in the period of time, this is a Zadi Bet Nun Aleph. This is really profound when we can take a connection, take a look at what this is, because this is the root right here, and we have a door again. So the door is going to present this information in the period of time, the sword in the plow. So as the door coming as the sword in the plow, he is going to help plow up the fallow ground so these seeds can be planted within so that which no longer serves can be cut off. And why is that? Well, here's the Hebrew root word, bana, which is to build, which is literally the root for the letter bet. But in this case, instead of having the hay, we have the olive. So it is in the time where we are to build that which allows us to know and become and sealed in the Mashiach anointing of the oneness, the unified field principle. And how do we do that? By building it, the covenant, Bet Tav, the 222, the spiritual path that leads us to the oneness unification. And then we have, this is another word for all, but this is huge. Since we just talked about consummation, this is the Hebrew word for bride. This is the Aramaic word for bride, and it is also the word for crown. So until the time when the bride has been able to consummate in the sacred marriage in becoming one because she has built it through the spiritual path, the covenant of love, as the door came to present this to all, to everyone, so they can be whole and healed and completed. But that's only going to be if the cup has been turned upright. They fill themselves with the revelation of the sacred languages that will help instruct them in order to become full. This is going to provide the revelation from the Father's teaching, the divine feminine principle, which will give them the power, means, and direction that they need, the work and deed of their hand, by going into their inner man that will reveal to them what they need to overcome their fallen flesh, beast, ego nature. So in summary, in answering some of the question about the matrix, this is the process of what it takes for us to exit the matrix. This is why the doors come to present this information in time, in a season where they are going to be revealed to the people bringing that. Well, that time is now. We are in the season of the revealing what you would know as the book of Revelation, the revealing of the Mashiach anointing that was just like what Yeshua presented to us and became as a measure standard for us to become in the likeness of him. Moving on to the next word. Who, which, and what? All right, well, that's good to know. Who, which, and what? <laughs> well, we just described that it's everyone, all, the totality of being. But in this word, you didn't see it. But I, I clicked it off, and unless you know Aramaic, uh, you wouldn't know what the root is. The root is Aleph Yod Noon Aleph. <laughs> but that's not what we're seeing here. What's beautiful about this, this is the word that is connected to Ayil. This is a strong one, a pilaster, a ram, a strong support as if uh, as an oak tree. And you should know that the oak tree has the deepest taproot of all living trees out there. And this is also symbolic of the word priest, the strong leader teaching shepherds that have been given the power, means, and direction on the inside 
that which they present to you. These are islands unto themselves, sovereign beings that stand as teaching shepherds if they've been instructed in the way of light, the letters of light, in order to present to you and teach you through the Father's vision, through his teaching, while you are in the fallen flesh suit in the lower realms. Again, why? Because they want to instruct you how to get out of the waters of chaos, to be set in the waters above as those who are of the name, those who have honor, integrity, authority, and character that are conspicuous, that are set above and set apart. This is the word mel, that means spoken. This is the word spoken. And it also, if you've listened to our teachings before, this is short for mellifus, mellifus, which means honey. This is the word, the sweet from the bitter. So if you've listened to our Esther's teachings before, Esther had six months of mar, bitter, which is literally mar is myrrh, before she went into frankincense, which is sweet, which is mel. So this is the words of the mel, the honey. The door will present to you through the blood, dom, which is just means the covenant of promise. You would need to go to the ancient Hebrew wedding to be able to understand that the covenant of blood is about the covenant of promise that happens and occurs through the intimate act that occurs, the consummation that occurs in the act of marriage, producing not only obedience to the covenant, but that which is necessary to overcome our beast nature. So these are the words that are coming forth presented by the door, the living water teachings of the twin teachings of light, that of mother and that of father, through the Hebrew and the Maramaic that are to be united and consummated into one, the words of Eloa. You guys need to know, too, that this word God in Hebrew is Eloah. This is the root of it. And we've been sharing with you many times that we are of the Elohim. We are the Elohim. But in the New Testament, you don't see Elohim anymore. You see Elaha. But the root is Aleph Lamed Hay. What's the difference? The oneness. The time when everybody realizes and knows that we are one, that we are gods. We are the strong leader teaching shepherds that come forth with the revelation of oneness through what? The spirit breath. So this is a completely spiritual issue that we must comprehend. This is the exhale and the inhale, the exhaled revelation so we can inhale the oneness principle that is coming forth from the strong leader teaching shepherds that understand the oneness principle that have the revelation that they carry within them. And this, if you've listened to some of my other teachings, the puma, the mountain lion, these are the mouths that speak the revelation. They have connected to the living water teachings that come out of their mouth because pe'alif is one of the root words or the constituent spellings of the Hebrew symbol pe. So within their mouth comes forth the living water because they connected to it within them, within their heart, as they were pierced, consummated as being one, because they built themselves through this, through the spiritual covenant, the bet tov, the 222, the two paths of the 22 letter, letters, and they are going to be speaking of this principle through the language so that you can understand that we are one, especially when you say, well, what is it, ma, because that's literally what this Hebrew word and Aramaic word means what? You know, what is this oneness principle? Well, they're going to be speaking about it. This is the word prophets. Nabi. So the prophets come as the judges. We've already discussed this. And the prophet's job is to be the doors to open up of the revelation to you, the spiritual path so that you can build yourself through the covenant of one, the covenant of strong love, to give you the vision, because that's what prophets do. They give you the vision, that which is contained within the word, so that you can connect to the revelation that they are bringing to give you the power as well. The power means and direction, 
the work indeed of your hand which must be done to make you what? Holy. <clears throat> Kadash is the root word for this. Going down so you can lean a little further. And notice it is a prophet and a prophetess. It is not just masculine. Both men and women can be presenting this to you. The only way a prophet and prophetess can do this is because the root, Nun Bet Aleph, they have to have become one. They need to be the strong teaching shepherds, but in their active role, in their oneness, they have to present the vision of becoming one. And the only way they can do that is giving that which you need, the power to connect to the Father's teaching, the divine feminine esoteric side that is hidden within the languages, which is what is being done here through this video to present this to you so you can grasp a hold of the power found within it so you too can become holy and set apart as a holy. This is what the saints were all about because they compress light within them during the circle of time from that which was once hidden now revealed so they could find the narrow path between having gone through the door the revelation that delivered them gave them the power within them, the power means and direction, to take the living fire that would consume their lesser beast ego nature and make them and understand and comprehend and to know they are one. That is the Mashiach anointing. And then we have the word from, sorry, from, old, dumb. The covenant of promise, man, the daily manna that they partake of, the promise, the promise that they take of while they are in the flesh as the door presents to them the living water teachings that will be exactly what they need to overcome their fallen flesh nature. And this is the ancient teachings from old so that you can ascend to be able to see the fountain within you, the instruction that you need to complete your journey through the living water teachings, those of the ancient time that are being brought forth in the process of ascension. This is truly the restoration and the completion of the fullness of what is being presented in the sacred marriage that will allow us to rise ourselves above what the cabal is doing to present and oppose us as we are standing forth as the judges who have this revelation have become it as establishing the ancient paths when we once all of us understand that we are all of one. This is when this will happen and this is truth. This is the truth that we are searching for. Source, light, love, completion. And that is why we labor the work indeed of our hand on this channel and those of you who are wanting to learn the sacred languages or rather remember them, this is why we are all gathering to help the collective as we make our stance against the cabal. I hope this answers your question. I know this is long. I'm not going to break this up. This is going to be one teaching. And I hope it assists all of you in the process of why we are here, in the process of our becoming. Shalom, shalom, and namaste.